Well, today on Nation, a window cleaning podcast, we are talking all about the 10 commandments of window cleaning. So if you have a window cleaning business or you're getting into window cleaning, make sure to stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com, and you are here. What's up? Have a look around. Uh, hopefully you like it. If you're new, you got lots to catch up on. We got over 200 and, what is this, 212, 215 episodes? I lose count. A ton of episodes. Go ahead. Binge away. Maybe you'll get some stuff out of it. Maybe you're an experienced window cleaner, but why not still surround yourself in awesomeness? Just saying. Right? Check it out. Uh, if you are one of the cool kids... That means you've watched every episode, and of course you've given the thumbs up on YouTube. You've commented on YouTube. You've probably even shared it, because that means you're that awesome. But more importantly, you've ordered your supplies through me. Mm? Shameless plug time. Then thank you. It is because of you that I get to live this lavish, lavish lifestyle um, of uh, getting name brand items with your commission money. Uh, but no, truly, I do want to be your rep for everything, every order, big or small, it doesn't matter. Um, you guys and girls out there who let me put orders in, it really, truly means a lot. I mean, you guys go out of your way to make sure that I uh, get to put the order in. So thank you so very much. Uh, it costs you nothing extra, and and it's like a virtual high five of delectable awesomeness. So please do that. My number is 862-312-2026. That's how I afford to do the show and why I keep going is to be able to help you guys. So thank you so much for that. Oh, and if you like stickers or you just want to submerse yourself in the awesome industry that we live in, uh, check out American Window Cleaner Magazine. That is a magazine that uh, I run is also absolutely amazing and uh, I don't have any sitting right by me. Uh, I changed up kind of the storeroom side, so they're not by me. I didn't prep. But go to awcmag.com and check out the American Window Cleaner Magazine. Yes, it's a magazine. And yes, we do a ton of them uh, every single month, mailed to your door. And every single issue gets a sticker sheet. Plus, there's articles and pictures and posters and everything else window cleaning in there. So be a nerd and get the American Window Cleaner Magazine. Anyway. So yeah, today we are going to be talking about the Ten Commandments of Window Cleaning. And listen, I know that we have all kinds of religious backgrounds. This is not blasphemy. This is not uh, religious by any any means. But these are the ten rules. The the steadfast uh, core ideas of window cleaning. This is them. These are some that you cannot ever break. You just cannot. And I'm going to go through them kind of fast, but let me know in the comments on YouTube if you agree with them, don't agree with them, what you would change. Uh, I want to hear from you. But uh, first off is do not stab a competitor in the back. Just don't do it. A competitor, I know a lot of you are like, I want to crush the competitor. Maybe you do business-wise. You want to be better than everybody around you. I get that. But don't purposely go and crush a competitor is not worth it. Competitors can be your friends, and most of the time actually are. Um, ask anybody around you that uh, is nice with competitors, and they do jobs together. Uh, they pick up work from them. They sub work to, from them. Um, they borrow equipment when something breaks. You know, It's really, really nice to have competitors out there that you work with, not against. And we did a whole episode, by the way, on uh, the competitor one. Uh, So go check that out. But I know some guys, too, who say that they'll... uh, I've heard of people who will see somebody cleaning windows. They'll wait till they leave and then go in there and try to take the account. Like, that's pretty shady. That's pretty shady. You don't need to do that. You don't need to do that. Now, if somebody calls you and you know that they're somebody else's account, they called you for a reason. So definitely go and take that. Don't stab your competitor in the back. Uh, Next one is always be selling. Always. Here's the big thing with selling. Selling is one of those things that a lot of us do not feel comfortable with. And I totally get that. I get that you don't want to be a salesman, 
right? You don't want to be pushy because salesman is a bad word. But there's a lot of good salesmen out there. People who will not push you or uh, force things on you or lie to you just to make the sale. No, but really, everything you do in your life is selling. You're going to sell yourself to new customers. You're going to sell your company uh, to somebody who's looking for window cleaning. You're going to sell uh, marketing and ads and why you're the best. You're going to always sell yourself, so always be selling. Practice it. Learn from it. Do everything you possibly can to be better at it. <clears throat> really. There is a, a lot of information out there, books and podcasts and everything else that you have to go and uh, hone up your skills in selling because there's a lot of you too who are just so scared of selling that you don't do it and you just wait for things to come to you and I, for one, am not the type of person who is just waiting on fate to send me stuff. I want to go out there and chase it. I want to go and get new customers. I want to be the one that's in control of if I fail or succeed and I think you do too, so... Hone your skills, man. Always be selling. The next one's diversify. I know a lot of you who are out there, and again, I'm just some dummy sitting in front of a wall of stickers, right? You don't have to listen to me. I'm not a no. I, I'm nobody. I'm not anybody that knows anything more than you. You know better for your business, but I think that diversifying your uh, window cleaning is huge. That means having a route. Uh, that means having um, commercial and residential, all three of those have a place in the calendar, in the scheduling. It helps you fill the schedule, which is super, super important. If you have a full schedule, then you're absolutely doing awesome, right? That literally is the point of what we do is you want to make sure to have a nice full schedule. So, you know, you're always making X amount and you're always going to have that work. And diversifying it is if you're just doing one or the other. I know a lot of companies more commonly, well, no, probably both ways. But there's a lot of companies out there who do just route. You're missing that residential money, right? I know a lot of people who do residential and don't ever do route. You're missing that frequency. So diversify. If you haven't thought about it, diversify. Go back and listen and watch uh, an episode on um, route work. I love route work, but uh, when you start a route, you're going to lose money. That's just part of it. You're going to drive across town for a $10 job, but that's what helps you continue to build that. And those are jobs you just have forever. So say you get a $10 a week job, that's a $520 job. That, I mean, you just sold a $520 job. That's a really nice house, right? That you're going to be guaranteed that money. Well, semi-guaranteed. Now you sell a $20 a week job. Doesn't sound like much, except that's $1,040 for the year. That's a lot when you talk about what it would take to get one house, right? So frequency is a key. Route is awesome. Definitely, definitely do that. Well, the next one is don't stray too far from your core. I know a lot of guys out there, especially when you're starting off, they want to do window cleaning, pressure washing, lawn care, uh, uh, you know, glass restoration, they want to do, um, you know, plowing and they want to do, they want to do everything. I know guys even that were picking up dog poop. Well, they're like, well, I'm at the house. I, can I do not want somebody who's picking up dog poop to clean my windows. I can't see how any person would want to do that. Remember cleaning windows is clean. You need to look clean. You can't look dirty or they're going to assume that you're not going to clean the windows. And that's lawn care. You can't help it be dirty. You can't help smell like gas. Uh, anything else that's too far from your core, you're just losing and you're opening it up too far. Now, it doesn't mean you're getting more customers. It just means that most, if you have two things that are so far apart, then when you do advertising, A, you look like you don't know either, right? Master of all trades is or no uh jack of all trades is the master of none right but the big thing is is that if you do too much then you advertise to one group or the other it's very hard to just advertise to one group and have them be all interested in every service you do unless you have a tight core the big thing is that you're wasting advertising dollars if you're advertising only to people with dogs 
Well, not everybody with a dog wants window cleaning, but there's people who would want window cleaning that don't have dogs, right? You're just advertising to two different people and you're losing all that income. Make sure to bring your core in. Don't fall into the trap of doing too much. It just isn't worth it. Not my opinion, but again, I'm nobody, so hey. Uh, if you have employees, the next one is for you or if you're thinking about employees, but it's keep your employees happy. Keep them happy. Your employees are the most valuable thing in your company. Now, I know that there are people out there who go, I don't care, I just get somebody else. Try it. See how expensive it is to get somebody else. All of the training and hours and things that you spent into somebody makes that person more valuable to you. That is why after a year, two, three, five, ten, they make more money. That person is more valuable to you. Do not disrespect employees when it comes to either pay or benefits or work environment. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. A lot of times people go, well, I'm. you know how much I'm paying this guy? Yeah, but do you know how much the guy made you? Nobody, not one of you, is paying an employee more than they're making you. Right? That's just that's just the fact. That employee is more valuable to you than you are to them. If they leave you, they'll get another job. It's not going to cost them a ton of money to get another job. It's going to cost you a ton of money to lose the employee. So a lot of you sometimes it gets into that mindset of, you know, the employee works for me. He can't do that or he can't Talk it over. Don't just devalue an employee. Make sure that they know they're valuable. I know I can't pay my employees uh, $100 an hour. I know I can't do that. So do other things that show them that they're awesome, that they love the work environment. Have an employee love where they work, not because of the pay. I mean, if you can because of the pay, that's cool too. But guess what? Pay is just pay. And eventually, you just like another dollar doesn't mean much. But you always doing nice things and cool things and all that and really making a work environment fun to work, they're going to have to work anyway. They have to work for a living. Everybody does unless you're, you know, financially set. But you have to work. If you have to work, that means that you have to be happy doing what you're doing or it's going to suck. You know, those people who sit in an office all day and hate their life, don't let your employees be one of those things. Just don't. Keep your employees happy. Another big one of the Ten Commandments is you gotta get understand your image is everything. You gotta get your image on par. That means everything needs to look the same. You need to look, smell, and appear to be clean. You have to. Your trucks have to look good. I didn't say new, I didn't say any of that. I said they have to look good. Keep them clean. They can't be a dumpster. Don't wear ripped shirts. Don't wear faded shirts. Shirts are cheap. Hats are cheap. Don't wear anything that is not logo and letter. Your image is everything. Remember that there's a lot of people out there who will tell you, oh, it doesn't matter about anything except for you doing good work. Bull. You can't do bad work, but you don't have to do great work. You don't have to be the greatest cleaner of a window. Clean is clean. It's the experience. Most of the experience is how they see you right up front, how they deal with you when you're working, when they watch you work, all that fun stuff. It's you, your image, and your company's company's, your company's image. Google reviews. Have to have great reviews. You have to have an image of being awesome. A professional image, or if you're going for like, people like me because I'm a one-man show, that's still your image. You still have to look the part. Don't let an image fall it just is not going to be beneficial to you at all. Again, I always tell people, um, by the way, let's jump off this real quick. If you're wearing a WCR shirt, I don't get it, but if there's a squeegee on it, okay. I love to see people wearing, and there's actually a Jers shirt right now from what I see. I don't own one, but I've seen it. Um, but if you wear one of those, that's cool. That's awesome for you. That's awesome for me. That's awesome for WCR. Like, we got this, like, inside kind of, like, that's cool. When you're doing work, don't wear that. I mean, a lot of you do whatever. Again, do your thing. Wear a work shirt that shows you're a company. Wear a shirt that is logoed and lettered. Maybe it's a collared shirt. 
but it looks nice, new, clean, crispy. It's the same logo and color scheme as the hat you're wearing, and the truck, and the invoice, right? Focus more on your image. I'm telling you, it will pay off if you do. Another one in the Ten Commandments is do not advertise when you're slow. This is another one that new people, even experienced people, you have a really rough like uh, winter, and you're like, man, it's like January. We, I got to get some bucks rolling in, man. I'm going to advertise. All you're doing is wasting money. Now remember, ROI is good, but your ROI and cost of doing the service have to turn a profit. If you're just trying to get work so that your employees can do something, okay, now your ROI is lower. You're not necessarily trying to make a profit. But if you spend $2,000 on mailers in January and you get $1,000 worth of work, you lost money. You've lost money. Because that $1,000 in work, hypothetically, you're going to be paying your guys, say, 35% of that for even numbers out of that thousand dollars, we'll say 300, 400 bucks. That's what the employee is going to get. So now you spent two thousand dollars to pay your employees 400 bucks. It would be way cheaper to just give them 400 dollars every week to make up the two thousand dollars. You're not selling things when people don't want it. The big thing is people panic and they go, "Man, it's slow. I got to advertise." That's not how it works. Advertising works only when you're busy, when it's in people's brains. Advertising does not drum up people when it's not in their brain. They can't force it to be in their brain. If you reach out pre-spring, right, you can get the lights, uh, the light switch going a little bit sooner because it's tricky. Oh, yeah, yeah, I got to get windows because it's coming up. It's going to be in their brain. But in the middle of winter, no one cares. They're like, it's January. I'm not getting my windows cleaned. You can't take my windows apart. That's what everybody thinks because it's cold. Can't open my windows. Water will freeze. It's always going to snow. It's gloomy anyway. It doesn't... So many things in winter. And again, your season may be... Your winter... Air quotes from Mark Tanner. uh, Your winter may be uh, different months than other people, right? Winter in like Arizona is haboob season. It's middle of summer. Their like off season is like July. Because uh, the monsoons come through. But either way, you can't advertise when you're slow. So don't try it. Don't say, oh, I know. I'm telling you, you don't. Don't do EDDM. Don't do anything. You know what you do advertise? If you want to put advertising, keep out there, is the free stuff. Craigslist. Flyers, if you want. You got more time than money? Go hand out door hangers. Door hangers are super cheap. Go hand them out. It's going to cost you nothing to do. You do a $3,000 mail campaign, you need to make an ROI on that to make it make sense. You spend $3,000 on a mailer, it has to make at least that amount of sales to break even before the work is done. Again, add 30% to that for even numbers. Or we'll say even because of gas and fuel and everything else, 50%. You have to add 50% to that. So you're at 40, you have to make $4,500 to break even. In January, for you to send out a mailer, you have to make $4,500 To just break even and make zero dollars for yourself. You can't do that when it's slow. Don't advertise when it's slow. Cannot stress that enough. (laughs) Another one in the uh, Ten Commandments. Another one in the Ten Commandments. By the way, I don't edit, so you're going to hear that nice little stumble there. Another one in the Ten Commandments is uh, run a business. Don't just clean windows. Remember that what we're doing, all of us, every one of you who is listening... Or watching. Hey, if you're watching. Um, is a business owner. Right? Well, maybe I shouldn't say that. Some of you work for somebody. I get that. I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to everybody else. Everybody who is a business owner, remember, you're not just there to clean windows. You're there to run a business. Business needs to make profits. They need to make more profits than they did yesterday. Things need to get lean. Things need to be run efficiently. Schedules need to be filled up. You can't have waste right? Trim the fat. You have to do all of that. Running a business is different than cleaning a window. Anybody could clean a window with enough practice. Not everybody can run a business. We know that, right? That's why restaurants fail. 
startups fail. All that stuff fails is because not the product's not good. It's that the people can't run the business. You have to focus on the business. You can't just clean windows. This all kind of came up to, um, there is a guy and his name is Kevin Dabrowski. He is a OG from way back in the day. I have like four of his books and he was a window cleaner guy. And one of the most kind of prolific things he's ever said to me was, um, uh, no one cares about clean windows as much as you do. Like something along those lines. And it's not about the clean window. It's about the business. It doesn't matter how clean the window is. It matters about the business. And the big thing is, is the experience of what it is, is what it is. Think about this. McDonald's. Again, I'm talking about McDonald's. McDonald's is a horrible place. Like, you know that. You get stuff and it's like, ugh. These fries are gross. This burger is like paper thin. Eh, whatever. It's fine. Nobody ever goes and goes, that was the best thing I've ever eaten in my life. Maybe you do. Maybe you're Jacob Dell, and I think he's the one that uh, really, really likes that. Maybe you really do like that, though. And that's fine, but not every experience, and I'm telling you, more than you can count on both hands. You've had bad experiences at fast food places, and people just go, ah, man, that one sucks. Those people are dummies. You understand that. You understand the food's going to suck. You still go there. It's not about the food. It's about the experience. It is about the look, the feel, the opening the bag, the smell of the grease when you get McDonald's. Walk into a McDonald's once. It always smells the same. It smells like dirty fryer grease. Do you think that any, every other restaurant has a smell like that? No. Go into a real restaurant. You don't smell food. You don't smell grease. You do at McDonald's. Why is that? Because it's part of the experience. It's one of the senses. Do you think they don't do that on purpose? Do you think that McDonald's, with all of their infinite money, cannot get a venting system that's anywhere like a sit-down restaurant? Because they can. They choose to have all that the same way for you. It's the experience of going there, right? We know that a chicken McNugget is just like ground up, reconformed, shaped nugget of stuff mostly chicken probably right some other stuff in there deep fried and put in a box but you want to know something we're okay with that same thing with windows a lot of people they focus too much on the windows and not on the business not on the experience not on the success of the business they're like ah oh, i gotta clean better what this soap i, I know there's got to be a better soap that's not as much what people are now you have to be clean I always tell people, you can't not do good work. You you can't do bad work. You just don't have to do perfect work. I had somebody one time tell me too. They're like, I can't believe you'd say that. I can't believe you run your business on that. I can't can't believe you wouldn't go for 100% perfection all the time. I did in the beginning. And if you run that way and you focus more on that, all of a sudden, your $200 house is taking you like six hours because you just there's certain parts of it. There's a degree of acceptance in window cleaning. Absolutely a degree of acceptance. Can't be junky. You can't have a streak right in the middle of a window. It can't look like crap. But if there's a little something in the corner or a little, if you look at the right thing, people aren't as worried about that. They are worried about the experience. How do they feel? What did the tech look like? How was the conversation? How did I, how did I, I wanted to pay. I wanted to tip. I had this great experience. That's what I remember. It's back to the McDonald's thing. You walk in, you smell the same thing. Close your eyes right now. You can tell what a McDonald's looks like. You can tell when you walk in a door where the counter is. You know the people. You can tell the taste of the Coke. Nobody ever goes there because the quality of the food is, is amazing. Just keep that in mind. Another one is having a marketing calendar. I beat this like a dead horse. Marketing calendar is super, super important. You have to have a marketing calendar in order to stay on track when it comes to later in the season. Now, if you don't have a marketing calendar, this is what it is. And again, go back, watch a bunch of my episodes. But a marketing calendar is just this. It is a calendar that dictates the week 
starting at when the light switches. It doesn't say like May 4th is, it starts with week one, week two, week three, and you know your season. After you're in this for a while, I was in Wisconsin, hypothetically, we'll say June was when everything started. It was actually more like, we'll say May, May to November, we'll say. I know how many weeks are in May to November, and I know where that breaks down to. I know how many weeks that is. In those weeks, I know I want to do X amount. What's my budget going to be for my marketing? Last year, say I made $100,000. I know that in my marketing budget, I want to do 10%. That's $10,000 I'm stretching out through the year. Break it down. Once a week, I'm going to do an EDDM. How does that look? Right? Put it all out there so that once you become busy in spring, you flip the switch and you start reading the marketing calendar. It doesn't matter what comes into play. It doesn't matter when you're busy, if you're if you're slower, if it's raining, if you lost somebody, if you got too many employees. The marketing calendar is there and you will stay and stick to it. After this ball is rolling, over the winter, you'll look at that marketing calendar and see where your changes want to be. Maybe you want to add something. Maybe you want to take something off. And now all of a sudden you're making $200,000. Now you have $20,000 worth of marketing to do. What are you going to do? Double it up? Or did you see, you know, uh, difference coming here and there? Well, you know what? I actually did two campaigns in June last year and uh, I didn't get really anything. So maybe you want to bring it down those times. Maybe you want to increase it in what you would assume when the light switches, you want to do front load all of your advertising. It's up to you, but make sure it's on a marketing calendar so you stick to that no matter what goes on. Because when you get busy, you forget to do everything. You're too busy to do everything. I mean, it's the reason that, you know, at the huge convention uh, that we had uh, a part in before, um, I'd always be like, oh, are you going to the convention this year? And people would be like, oh, I'm just going to be too busy. What? Of course, everybody's busy. What are you talking about? Are you going? You get, plan it. Oh, I don't think I can. Then you're not a business owner. What are you talking about? You're a business owner for that reason. Like, especially if you're going to one week out of the year. You're going to do something and you can't escape. That means your planning is poor. You didn't put it into a calendar. The marketing calendar is the same thing. Oh, did you, uh, this spring, did you did you do that uh, $5,000 worth of uh, EDDM? No, no, we just got too busy. Okay, well, now that you're not busy, it doesn't make sense to do the $5,000 in marketing. Right? Marketing calendars are important. Make sure to do them. And the last one in the Ten Commandments of Window Cleaning, it's make hard goals. Make hard goals. Now, I am not a fan of um, hard set goals, right? I am not a fan of in five years, I'll be at this, because so much can change in that. And again, you can see where you're going, but you're riding a bike in the sand. You don't know how you're really getting there. You can just try and plan for it. So goals, not meeting hard that way, but I mean goals that are harder than you think you might get. If you did 30% last year in growth, push for 35, 40% this year. But don't just say it. Don't just write it down on a scratch paper. How does that look? A goal has to be written down and it has to be calculated on how to get there. Right? A goal is a GPS because you're trying to get somewhere. If I'm trying to go from my house to your house, I type it into the GPS and the GPS tells me every single turn and how far the distance is between the turn. It's the only way I can get to your house the most efficiently. If I just know kind of where you are, maybe I'll go that way. Maybe I'll do all right. I won't know traffic. I won't know, you know, what roads are best, right? GPS is like your goals. You have to set them, but set them hard enough that it makes sense to put extra in there. If you just do a goal of, well, I made 100000 last year, I'm going to do 100000 this year, uh, you can do your thing. But the problem is, if you do that, there's nothing to push you to that. Because you're like, yeah, I did it last year. No biggie. I'm just going to sit back and it'll happen, right? In business, we need to struggle uh, a little bit. We need to create a push or fire in us a little bit. We have to. So... Putting goals out there that are a little bit harder, it makes sense to do that. You have to do that. 
Anyway, those are the Ten Commandments of window cleaning. So make sure that you listen to all of them and hopefully you stick to them. But like I said in the beginning, I am a rep for windowcleaner.com, window cleaning resource, and I want to be your rep. I want to be your guy. You need supplies. I got to call my guy. That's me. Hey. My number is 862-312-2026. Call me. Text me. Tell me everything's in your cart. I get that all the time. That's great. Yo, Jersey. Run my cart. My address is 123 and the cart is 1234. I'll pull it up. Be like, dude, awesome. Everything looks good. You're good to go. Yeah. It's that easy. I get credit for it. You got a guy. So when you have troubles or problems, I'm there. And more importantly, it's like uh, that virtual high five of awesomeness. So definitely go and do that. Also, get a subscription to AWC. We have like thousands of listens a week. And I know some of you have not gotten a subscription yet. So do it. That would be absolutely amazing. And I see when you guys subscribe. It's absolutely phenomenal, all of those who have. I mean, there's some people who I put in all their orders. And you got a subscription to the magazine. You do everything. And I'm just so grateful. So thank you. Uh, AWCMAG dot com forward slash sub get your subscription buy some stickers buy back issues i got a ton of back issues you want back issues buy some back issues anyway go do that and uh until next week go out there and be epic